Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. It's time to look at jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript library, meaning it contains a lot of JavaScript code and functions and it provides an interface so that we can access that code. The interface that it provides makes it a lot easier to write JavaScript. It uses methods based on traditional JavaScript functions and the document object model. So behind the scenes, jQuery is actually the document object model, but it gives us methods that allow us to access those functions easier. It eliminates all of the complexity that JavaScript usually has. Also, browser differences are built into it. We have not really seen browser differences because we really haven't used what is called the event model. It is CSS3 compliant and there are thousands of plugins that allow us to very easily incorporate uh, jQuery functionality into the web page. It practices unobtrusive JavaScript, meaning we keep the JavaScript separate from the HTML. With jQuery, you can write less and do more. jQuery was developed in 2006 by John Resig. The current version is actually a little higher than 1.9. And there is a lot of awesome documentation at the jQuery.com website. jQuery is not the only JavaScript library, and it was not the first. Dating back to 2004, there were some others. jQuery has emerged at the most popular. There are two ways that we actually use the jQuery library. We can download the library ourselves from jQuery.com or we can use what is called a hosted version from a content delivery network, also known as a CDN. This is an example of using the Google hosted library. In the opening and closing script tag, we have the source. The source generally accesses an external file, and it still is. The only difference is that this external file is located on a Google server. The advantages to doing this are, number one, this file is cached on the server so that it will download quickly. Number two, a lot of people use it. So the chances are that if you've been on a website that uses this file, it's already cached in your browser also. Therefore, it's going to load easily. It's not like the, the user has to download this big, humongous file every time it goes to your web page. It's probably already cached. Now, rather than using a, tr a specific version, you, you can actually just automatically access the latest version at the jQuery.com site. So here, we, we are accessing the um, hosted version from jQuery.com and the file name is jQuery-latest.min.js. I'll talk about the min shortly. Remember this is a JavaScript file so it's .js. Here again you can download the file yourself and host it along with your website files which means that the user will have to download it. Nothing wrong with going that route, especially if you are using an earlier version of jQuery. There are some plugins out there that only work with the earlier versions because the later versions are not backward compatible. 
therefore there are times when you may need to do this all right this min all right dot m i n this is this refers to minification it means that this file has been minified and you can find a program that will do that all that means is that because we are downloading this file we want to keep our file size at a minimum every character is essentially a byte every space every tab every carriage return and these spaces tabs and carriage returns and comments are used for us to make our code readable it doesn't interfere with the actual code itself the code will still execute fine without it therefore these files are minified all the unnecessary characters are removed and if you were to read it it would be pretty horrible because it would all be all be next to each other but it allows for a, a smaller file size for purposes of downloading all right where is all this jQuery code placed because jQuery is heavily based on CSS and CSS selectors you always want to make sure the CSS is the first thing in the head section underneath the title and the meta tags and everything else all right now the reference to the library has to go in for, before any other JavaScript because the JavaScript is dependent on the library now some developers may place all the code at the bottom um, and that's fine all right so this is an example of essentially where the three pieces fit in in the head section of the document in the green first is where your CSS goes next the red is where the reference to the jQuery library goes finally any other JavaScript goes after that so this is the order in which your code needs to go in your document the ready event you may hear people calling this the ready method or the ready function okay it is a built-in event of jQuery and this is how it is called dollar document dot ready document is referring to the document object model the same document that we refer to with document dot write and with document dot get element by ID the dollar sign is what jQuery uses to indicate an object reference so all of our object references will be placed inside parentheses and the dollar sign will go to the left very similar to that function that we saw the author of our textbook using the only difference is you don't have to use a function now because this is built into jQuery alright document dot ready and in parentheses all right this is the ready event very similar to the window dot on load event which means that this is where your code goes here again you still have to wait until the document object model has been loaded because we reference the objects in the page with JavaScript and with jQuery because jQuery is JavaScript now technically speaking window dot on load meant that everything has to load images audio files videos etc the ready event means that only the document object model has to load we could care less if the images are loaded as long as the image tag is there that's part of the document object model so technically the ready event is quicker than the on load event all right so this is how you write the ready event and it calls an anonymous function and all the code that you're going to be writing is going to go here this is just the way it's done all right so at the very top of the screen here the very first script tag 
is a source reference to the library. The library always goes first. Then in the block of the following script block is where the ready event goes. The ready event will call an anonymous function. Notice the ready event. An event has parentheses after it. The opening red paren, the closing red paren. We are passing an anonymous function to this event. So we have the keyword function open and close parentheses. Now technically I guess we could put some parameters in there, but we're generally not at this point. Now the function, the code to be executed inside this anonymous function. Left hand purple curly brace ending at the right hand cur purple curly brace. So take a look at where the opening and closing delimiters for both the ready event and the anonymous function are. Now something that you're going to see in jQuery that you have not seen in JavaScript because it doesn't belong in JavaScript is the semicolon at the end of this event. At the end of events you see semicolons in jQuery and this is a very common ending trio paren, excuse me, curly brace, ending curly brace, ending paren, semicolon you're going to have these ending trios occurring several times in your code and it is not a bad idea to get in the habit of recognizing it and also commenting it so you don't go crazy uh, trying to figure out where they belong. Alright, so here is our ready event. Notice at the end of a ready event I have a comment and ready so we know where it is because inside this ready event is where you're going to be putting other functions and other events and they're going to be ending with that same trio and it's a good idea to start commenting. Alright now don't take for granted that you are ac actually calling the jQuery library. Always test it make sure that you are accurately reading that jQuery code before you start writing because if you start writing and things aren't happening you don't know whether things aren't happening because you did something wrong or because maybe your internet connection is out or maybe you did something wrong in the code that is referencing the library. So this is not a bad idea to always test to make sure that we are reading that CDN library. Alright, the reason that jQuery is so popular because it's based upon CSS selectors and this should be very familiar to seasoned HTML developers. Alright, these are just a few of the typical selectors, an element selector, a class selector, an ID selector, and there are very many others. Alright, uh, the syntax for accessing a selector or making an object reference to that selector so that we can do something with it is the dollar sign and inside the opening and closing parentheses is the name of the selector. The name of the selector can be must be inside a quotation and that can be a single quote or a double quote. And here again it is a JavaScript statement so it will end with a semicolon. For example, an element selector is just an element. Any HTML element we can use as a selector. So if we were going to reference that element selector, this is how we would write it, dollar and in parentheses h1. Now just like traditional CSS, if you were applying a style to an element selector, it would apply that style to every occurrence of that element on the page. Well the same thing with jQuery. An element selector refers to every existence of that element on that page. An ID selector, for example, in this line of code, h1, id equals first heading. That is an id attribute, and we use this for CSS. jQuery uses it also as a selector. So if you look at the jQuery code, there's our dollar sign, and in the parentheses, 
pound first heading. Notice we do put the pound sign here because that is technically the CSS selector. All right, it literally uses CSS selectors. If you remember document.getElementById, there was no pound sign. It was just the value of ID. This is the selector. The pound sign goes there. So I'm sure that this is a little confusing, but just remember it. All right, a class selector. Here in our H1 element, class equals red. This is CSS. If we wanted to access every essentially object or element that had a class of red, this is how we would do it using jQuery. Dollar, and in parentheses, the name of the class. The, excuse me, the class selector. The class selector is the same as the CSS selector, dot red. You need the period there. All right. A typical descendant selector, if we take a look at our, our HTML, inside the H1 we have an I. The I is a child or a descendant of H1. All right, now the H1 has a class of red. I can use that class as the parent of I, and in my selector, I can say dot red I. This is a descendant selector. We can apply a style to that in the opening and closing style elements. This is also a way of referencing a specific thing on the page using jQuery. Look how nice and easy that is. That would not be so easy using the document object model. Here again, if you do not understand this slide, you need to go back and review your CSS.